Hello all and welcome back to the iOS pen testing series part seven. Um, in this episode, I'm gonna briefly go over file system monitoring. So file system monitoring is helpful for identifying files and file structures that the application may be writing to. This may be uh, databases or plain text files or, or whatever the application is using, um, which may be storing sensitive data. I do have another video which is in the works, which is bypassing SSL pinning and jailbreak detection. Um, the reason I haven't released it today is because I'm waiting on a microphone arm just so the sound quality is a bit better. It's not so all over the place. I'm hoping that will help. I got rid of my last one, which I was using for streaming. So I had to buy a new one. Okay, anyway, so the tool we're gonna to look at today is called FSMon and I believe it's by Now Secure. Um, I'll leave the link to it in the description below. Uh, so what it does is it will monitor, well, it does what it says on the tin, it will monitor your file system for any changes that are made. Um, it does this using various APIs such as iNotify or FA Notify, uh, KQ. Um, the, the main point of this is to, at least for us, is to monitor what the app is going to be doing. So let's go ahead and download the iOS version. This is in the releases page on the now secure repo. We could compile it ourselves, but I, I don't see the need to. Generally, I've, I've not had any need to compile it myself. The binary works fine. So let's open a terminal and we'll run SCP FSMON and then we do root at 192.168.0.13 and then var slash root slash FSMON. Once we've done that, we can SSH into the iPad. and we can run the application. This will actually check for all file system changes. So instead, we just wanna grep for our DVIA application. Let's just pipe the output to grep-i DVIA. Alternatively, FSMon does have a flag, which is dash P, um, which will allow you to specify a PID, so it will only pick up events from that process. Uh, that's what we're gonna use in this video just because I feel like it's a more focused way, it's a more focused approach just on that PID. So to find the process, the easiest way would probably be to run PS. Um, the command is PS space AUX, and then pipe that to grep and just search for DVIA or whichever application you're looking against. Now that we have the PID, we can run FSMon against that. Obviously, if you don't have the PID, it's probably because you don't have the application running on the iPad already. So go ahead and start it, whether it be the DVIA application or whether it be something else, um, and then rerun the PS command and you'll get the PID then. Okay, now we can run FSMon with the PID. Now I've got that running, I'm going to go into the local data storage section and change to plist again. Um, the reason I chose plist in this case was because we know where the files are, we can see for certain. One of the reasons that I wanted to make this video in the first place was because I'm not gonna do any more of the local data storage challenges here. Um, I'm gonna go over the plist one now just to make sure that everyone's got it covered and to show you how you can easily find out where the, where the files are being written to. So let's click on the plist one and navigate to plist, type in test, and test one, two, three, four, and then click save in plist. And then in our terminal, we can see which files were written. Obviously, this could be any sort of file. If the application was writing to a text file, then you'd, you'd see that. Um, if it was writing to a database, you'd also see that. I can show you it writing it to a database if we use YAP database. So click on the app database and in there type test and test one, two, three, four, click save in database. And there you go. There's the database being saved. Again, I'm not going to go through the app database. You need to download an external program to run it or to, to, to inspect it. Uh, but I, I believe this gives you enough information, enough knowledge to go out there and do it yourself anyway. Again, I just want to give a huge shout out to James Duffy who wrote about this tool and I learned it from his book. Uh, the book is called iOS Research and Exploration Volume 1. The, I'll, le I'll leave a link to the book and his blog down below in the description. So please go check him out, show him some love. 
Once again, if you've learned anything in this video, please drop us a like, subscribe to the channel as it really helps out, and feel free to comment down below if you have any questions or any suggestions. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you for joining. Thank you.